The group Medieval Babes have performed at some of the most fabulous venues over yeah. the years. We which has been. been which has been the most memorable performance for the group? Well, there was a slate mine that we used to sing out in Cornwall called Carn Glaze Caverns, which unfortunately now has been sold, so you can't actually um, book it anymore. But that was really amazing. That was like a whole underground kingdom. Like wow. that, that. I mean, that that really does stand out over the years. But I mean, just I mean, all these extraordinary cathedrals we get to perform in. I mean, you don't really get rubbish cathedrals, do you? Let's face Definitely it. Definitely not. But no. some of them really do stand, like Ely Cathedral, for instance. I mean, that really stands out. It's where they where they filmed a lot of um, a lot of the Elizabeth movies. I mean, yes. that is really spectacular. It's actually longer than the High Street. Wow, we. I mean, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> that one really stands out. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Now, when you're writing music, do you find it easy? Do you have to listen to some kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, sound like medieval music in order to get into that mood? Or is it what? something that comes natural to you when you're writing music for medieval babes? Music comes very naturally to me. I'll, what I'll do normally if I'm going to write some music, I'll just press record and I'll just start singing and see what happens. And normally your first idea is the best one. So it's really important that you press record when you first have an idea because you often return to that and go, actually, you know what? I nailed it the first time. Because otherwise you can just go out of your head and you would go, what was that again that I saw? I know. I, o- I often dream music and then I wake up. I've written music in my sleep. I know I've written it, but I can't remember it when I woke up. Once I managed to remember it and turned it into a piece of music, which is called Avril, of the Medieval Babes' third album, Indian Tide. I managed to keep it in my head and, write and got, just wrote it down straight away. So that was good. Thank goodness for <laughs> Thank goodness for that. Do you, yeah. So do you, when you go to sleep, do you have a tape machine next to you just in case you wake up with an idea? Well, I don't have, but we don't have tape machines these days. We've got well, these, well you've we? got that. Yes, yeah. of course you have. <laughs> yes. The modern but maybe, tape machine. But you see a tape machine, you would go on. But with that, with a mobile phone... I know you've got to mess to... around with your app and everything, haven't you? I know, I know. <laughs> That's, right. I know. That's <laughs> why I thought, are you, are you doing like the old-fashioned way there? There's a little yeah. cassette machine. Well, if it was really old-fashioned, I'd be just writing it all out by hand. <laughs> well, you would a, be, that's with right. With pen and ink, you know. That's right, yeah, with your quill then. Yeah, with like, my quill, yeah. candlelight, yeah. yes. If I was really going to go old school, you know. That would be definitely very yeah. medieval. And I wouldn't be advertising this stuff on Instagram and, and Facebook. I'd be sending uh, like the town crier out, wouldn't I, around Newcastle. You that's you know. right. We'll get the South Shields <laughs> mayor out there. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Now, unfortunately, one of the groups, as you mentioned, founding musicians, Dorothy Carter, uh, died of a stroke in 2003 at the age of 68. Yeah. In addition to playing uh, auto harp, also uh, Hurdy Gurdy, um, Dulcima with the group, uh, she performed the lead vocals. How did the group take the news uh, of the passing? Well, she was a woman that lived life to the full. When I first met her, I was out in Berlin and we were performing in a, in a cabaret band together out there. And it was just, it, she actually inspired me to start the band. And all her amazing cranky instruments, like the, her, like the ones that you so did quite well there. Thank Listing you very much. Instruments, that was pretty good. <laughs> I've heard worse. <laughs> so that was an inspiration to start the band initially. And she used to come over from Berlin and stay with us. And I've actually, she was about to come over and stay with me when I was going to produce her, um, her, her, her solo album for her when, when she died just before that. So it was really bad timing. But, but yes. she did have an extremely full life. She was the first time I met her when we, we went out to, to a bar after, after rehearsal. And, you know, she was this really, she was tiny. She was probably, like, smaller than five foot tall. You know, yes. this, And she looked like a little sort of fairy creature. But she went up to the bar and ordered tequila and knocked it back and went, Hell, sometimes a tequila's the only thing that hits the spot. And I was like, <laughs> wow, this is one hell of a granny we've got on our hands here, you know. Definitely. She was a party. She parted everyone else onto the table, you know. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely so, yeah. amazing. But yes, um, yes, I thought I'd mention Dorothy, Dorothy there because she was uh, there at the beginning with yourself. There. Yeah, she was uh, indeed. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Now, Medieval Babes have gone from strength to strength with uh, since releasing uh, the debut album um, in the Babes' first album, uh, Salvanos, in 1997, That's which right, reached yeah. number two on the UK specialist 
classical charts. And the second one got to number one. It certainly did. Don't, as leave, well. don't leave that bit. One, number one. Yes. Who, was, who was above us? No one. No well, one. no one in the classical no. world, anyway. Exactly, exactly. And then Charlotte Church came and knocked us off the number one spot. It's amazing, isn't it? Who would have believed it? <laughs> Charlotte Church knocking the medieval babes off the top spot. This, she was a child at the time. Imagine the humiliation. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was everywhere, wasn't she? Yeah, she was yeah, everywhere. amazing singer. Everywhere. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, and did she not start? On, was she on one of the competitions to to be a, a child cover star or something like that? I don't know what the the, um, BBC. the origins of her career, but you know, obviously, you know, yeah, <laughs> she's amazing. She's a fantastic singer, and she's still doing loads of great stuff, isn't she? Actually, she she's certainly is. Transition yes. into adulthood and is having a really successful career. And good luck to her. They'll always be a little bit bitter about that. Of course, yes. <laughs> but at least you got your number one there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. the main thing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and did you get a disc for that at all? Any kind of the first disc? one we got a silver disc. Yeah, yeah. That was over sixty thousand copies sold in the UK. So that was good. I gave it to my mum. You know. Oh lush, lush. Yeah, yeah. So is that still hanging around somewhere? Yeah, in my mum's house. Yeah. She, I thought, you know, she can be all proud of it and everything. You know, mums love that stuff, don't they? You know. I know. I would love one of those discs just to put on the wall. Yeah. Just to look at. Because <laughs> yeah. they look beautiful. They do. They actually. do. Yeah. They yeah. do. They do. Yeah. Fabulous achievement there for the medieval babes. Now, since um, those albums were released, albums have followed with great success. And now in 2023, a new album has been released medieval babes midwinter yeah i mean Could that you... was actually last year but because <laughs> it's christmas we're just we're, we're and we're going on tour we're taking the same album to radio with different tracks because christmas comes around every year that's the beauty of a christmas it's, album it certainly does you know? well funnily enough when i was writing things up here i was thinking i'm sure i played the medieval babes album on last week on um last year's um well, christmas shows and things well, it's, it's just becoming a tradition, isn't it? Of course it, it is. Of course yeah. it is. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, we've got a... Christmas a, is all a, about tradition, you know. Of course <laughs> it is. Well, there's a lady that I interviewed called Sarah Reeves. Uh, she's got an album called More the Merry Out. And she's just added additional songs to the to the album pressing, as it were. So it's something that, you know, it's something that you could probably keep on releasing year after year. And you could just... It is, yeah. You know, and put little so tweaks many, in and... So many great songs on the album, which we'll be doing on our tour. You know, we've, we've just added a new one. Actually, Gal was sailed to the set, which is really good fun. We did it for the first time last night, actually. We did a gig last night, a private show for a blind man who didn't want to come to a concert with loads of right. people. Around. So we did our set for the first time last night, which was, you know, that was a really extraordinary experience, really touching experience. Yeah. And it's a massive album as well that you've got out there. So many different... Uh, like tempos of tracks and things absolutely amazing yeah. oh glad you like it <laughs> absolutely love it yeah now uh, going off of the off on a different tangent um talking about vinyl records is there a vinyl record that you've ever bought and uh, if so what was it or what is it well you know what the first album i ever bought vinyl album was it was the kids from fame again it Excellent. wasn't even it wasn't even the kids from fame it was the sequel to the kids from fame kids from fame again it's <laughs> not very cool is it you know a lot of people like yeah it was like david bowie you know whatever yeah. talking heads and they got no oh, kids from fame for me you know? yeah kids from fame well the i've got a copy of the second album somewhere lying around here uh yeah. in me a little archive here well yeah. it's a it's a it's a mess actually of loads of records uh, yeah. but yes that is in there and it's actually got a song the song was actually quite big off that album if you yeah. call big number 40 or something in the charts or wherever it got um yeah. but it was um called mannequin off the okay. album that you had there so right, at least okay. it, it did have some kind of um you know chart success yeah yeah but not yeah. like the first album of no. it's from fame <laughs> so that is a great choice that actually we may actually play mannequin just for you oh. on the show yes just to just so you can relive those wonderful memories there thank you Catherine. thank you <laughs> well unfortunately Catherine, we've run out of time so it just leaves me to say thank you so much for joining me on the show 
and you know it's you about to go on tour and i believe you're going to be coming to saint nicholas's cathedral in newcastle yes, certainly I think are is it monday the 11th of it's the 11th yes and we're going to be with the tour the theme of the tour is the procession and we're going to be processing outside on the street with flaming torches Wow. And we, we urge people to join us in this in our glorious parade. And if they want to join in the fun, they should meet us in the square out by the statue of Queen Victoria. Now, that's not it. That's easy one to remember, isn't it? And we're going to do a procession around the square and then into the church, into the cathedral. Absolutely so that, fantastic. So that will just really set the scene. And it, it's like a sort of an immersive start to the show because people can actually get involved to be part of the performance. That's excellent, and it'll be great yeah. to come along and maybe uh, maybe watch the show there. Please do, lesson. please do. Yeah, that would be that great. That would be excellent. Like yes, I, yeah. I might make, I might bring my mother along if it's all right with you. Oh, yeah, bring yeah, absolutely. Because she absolutely yeah. loves the um, the Saint Nicholas's Cathedral and and it's, it's so got wonderful yeah. acoustics and things. Yeah, exactly. I bet you it's yeah. going to be yeah. a really dreamy event. You know, so it will be yeah. Other, otherworldly, festive, ceremonial, all the good things. You know, all the good things that we need there, Catherine. Yeah. Well, Catherine, finally, could you introduce your latest single from the brand new album? Well, it's uh, repressed I'll just as, say as it were. We'll the continue. album. Midwinter, yeah. the album Medieval Babes, Midwinter, which is out now. Hi, this is Catherine Blake here from Medieval Babes, and I'd like to introduce our track Rio Rio Chio from our Christmas album Midwinter. Catherine Blake, thank you so much for joining us on the show, and all the best to all of the Medieval Babes. Thank you so much. No problem. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye. Have a Merry Christmas. All the best. And you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.